some of the first graders were uh, asked to draw a picture of God. And they had some interesting theology. One of them drew a picture of God or a rainbow. Another drew a picture of an old man coming out of the clouds. And one little boy drew a picture of God who looked an awful lot like Superman. But the one that really I think was the best was the one little girl who said, I didn't know what God looked like, so I just drew a picture of my daddy. You know, I, I think sometimes that we all want to be that representation. That, and I hope and pray that our, our dads, we have some great dads in our church, I, I can tell that. But I know that we want, when the children see us, they want, we want them to see a reflection of God in us. But yet at the same time, we know that we fail and we come very short of that. Today is Father's Day. And it's a day that we celebrate our fathers, but uh, we also know that it's uh, a day that <clears throat> is tough. And at the same time, our fathers don't always get appreciated and, and like they should <laughs> sometimes, just like moms. Uh, I'm reminded of the story of the, the kids that wanted a puppy one time. And they, they asked her, Mom, can we get this puppy? And, and uh, she protested and said, they're too much trouble. They're messy. I'm just not going to, not, we're not going to do that. But they persisted. Please, Mom, we'll take care of it. We'll, we'll feed it and we'll clean it. You know how that goes. Finally, the mom give in and say, okay, but if you don't take care of it, I'm going to get rid of it. And so they named the puppy Danny, and they took the Danny home, and uh, sure enough, the kids took care of this pup and did great for about a week. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, the mom found herself doing all the taking care of the puppy. You guys have been there probably. Finally, she put her foot down and said, okay, I'm sorry, but we're going to have to get rid of Danny because he's just too much trouble. And I'm the only one that does the work around here, so we're going to have to get rid of him. The kids, to her surprise, weren't terribly upset. But they said, uh, you know, well, if he wouldn't eat so much and be so messy, would, we wouldn't have to get rid of him. And, mo and Mom said, I'm sorry, we got to get rid of Danny. And they all looked at her at one time and said, Danny, we thought you said Daddy. <laughs> well, it's true. If daddies didn't eat so much and weren't so messy, there wouldn't be as much trouble for sure. But we still, we thank God for them today. Well, I wonder what Jesus said about his daddy. After all, that's what he referred to him when he called him Abba. It's a parental term that could be loosely translated as daddy. And I want to take a look at that uh, this morning in Matthew's Gospel. Ron's already read some of that. But uh, just to take a moment to kind of go over what Jesus is saying. He begins, uh, we'll look at verse 20, 29 there. Uh, I'm going to back up to verse 26 where he says, Have no fear of them. Of people, for nothing is covered that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. And what I say to you, the dark tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear, now there's that word today, fear. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. But rather fear him who can destroy both soul and and body in hell. And in this passage here, uh, Jesus is bringing out a point to the disciples that they are going to be sent out among wolves, really. And they're going to a world that's going to reject them, a world that's going to hate them for what they stand for. And because of that, they will be persecuted, maybe even killed. And he's basically saying to them, don't worry so much about what they can do to your body. 
you should be more worried about and have a more of a fear of what could happen to your soul. And I find today that a lot of people don't even consider that, or maybe they don't take time to think about that. But I think there is a healthy fear today of God. There are, there's also an unhealthy fear. And I guess uh, to put it in perspective, it's kind of like what we're seeing today with our law enforcement. And, you know, we know that there are uh, things out there that, that happens that shouldn't happen. But at the same time, for the most part, it seems to me, that if you're on the right side of the law, you don't have a lot to be afraid of. Now, in other parts of the world where things happen uh, differently, I don't know. But I, I'm going by my own experience. I can't speak for everyone else. But I can say that uh, in times and past times of my life when I wasn't so much on the right side of the law, I was afraid when I got pulled over. I was very afraid. And I had a right to be afraid. But now, not so much. And, and it doesn't mean that I do not respect them. I have a healthy respect and a healthy fear. So even today when I'm driving and I, I see a policeman, I will hit the brake sometimes out of instinct, even that if I'm not speeding. It's just something that, that we do. And I think it's a healthy fear. And uh, one day I was driving down the road, I'll tell this on myself, and I was... Uh, I think Sandy had asked me to stop at the store on Town Mountain over there at uh, the, uh, the other Food City place. And I'm going down the road, minding my own business, when all of a sudden it occurred to me I was supposed to stop at the store, but I'd already passed the store. And if you know where that gas station is, there is a, a, a lane that you turn, it's a turning lane. So all of a sudden I whipped my car into the turning lane. And I realized when I did, I was in the wrong, going the wrong way because it's a one-way turning lane. But I also realized that there was somebody turning in that same lane, and it was the state police. So here I am going head-to-head, -head, face to face, almost going ready to hit head-on with the state police. And I whipped my car back out onto the side and got out of the way. And then I turned in, and naturally I saw blue lights coming behind me. And this has been a few years ago. And he pulled me over, and uh, we talked for a minute. And uh, he said, uh, are you okay? And I said, yeah. He, he's like, uh, well, you, you seemed a little confused back there. <laughs> I said, yeah, I get that way sometimes, so very sorry. And he's very nice, and he didn't give me a ticket, thank God. He could have. And that was the end of that. But... I, I, I'll be honest with you, I was, I was a little bit of afraid to get a ticket maybe, but I wasn't really absolutely scared because I knew I wasn't, you know, doing, I hadn't robbed a bank or anything, and, uh, and I didn't have a warrant for my arrest. So what I'm saying is that sometimes it's healthy to fear because, and, and you have a right to fear if you're in the wrong. So the same thing, let's, let's make that apply to God. If God is not in your life, and if you're an enemy of God, and you, you know, God doesn't want to be an enemy of anyone, but if you have chosen to be an enemy of God, that you're going to just go against everything God says, and that everything His principles teach, you're going to go against that, then you have a right to fear God. You have a right, you should fear God. And that's why Jesus said, you know, uh, don't fear a person who can only destroy the body, but fear him that can destroy both thy body and soul in hell. And God, you know, has the power to do that. And, you know, if we're not careful, we, we only picture this God who's up there who's out to get us. Most policemen I know are not out to get us. God is not out to get us. God loves us. And he goes out of his way. He sent his son to die on a cross so that we could avoid anything like that, any kind of terrible destruction. But yet, we choose sometimes to go against him anyway. I love that song. I sing it in the hospital a lot, Amazing Grace. When it gets to that verse, was grace 
that taught my heart to what? Fear. Grace taught my heart. It was grace that taught me a healthy fear of God. But grace, my fears relieved. That same grace that taught me how to fear God was the same grace that taught me that God loved me. And if you have one without the other, you're going to be confused about God. If all you do is fear God, and all you know about God is that He's vengeful, then you're going to have an un, uh, unhealthy picture of God. But that same grace came into my life one day and said to me, you don't have to do anything and just believe in God and, and ask Him, He will save you. It was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved. And so it's healthy. And so today I don't go around afraid of God. I don't walk around, I still have a reverence for God, don't get me wrong, but I don't walk around afraid to do anything because I think God is out to get me. I know God loves me. And you can't lose if God's on your side. But then he goes on to say this. And here's the, these very comforting words. Look at verse 29. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet none of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. What an amazing statement. The sparrow is one of the most common birds in the world. You can find them in all parts of the world. India, Australia, Chile, United States, everywhere. They're very common. Millions of them. And yet the Bible says that not one falls to the ground that God doesn't know and care about. And he says, even the hairs of your head are counted. Now some of us don't have as much hair as we used to. You know, I envy some of you, Bruce. But, you know, think you better be glad you have it now because it may not be there forever. So the hairs of our head are numbered. And what's he saying here? He is saying that God is very, very involved and cares intimately about you and about me. That God cares even about the small things of your life. And if he cares for the sparrows that fall from heaven, then how much more, he says, are you valuable than they? You do not be afraid. So do not be Afraid. Do not fear. Why? Because God cares for you. Think about that for just a moment. That Jesus cares for us. Don't be afraid because you're worth more than many sparrows. Fear can be a crippling thing in the Christian life and in our world. We see it today, and I know that fear can be politicized and used against people, but it can be something that, that cripples us. And it's good. Fear is a me mechanism that we should have. It helps us to, to, have a, uh, to make good decisions sometimes. But if we're not careful, it will cause us to be irrational as well. So cautious, yes, but irrational, no. So what do we do? When we got all these things in our world today, Jesus says, don't be afraid. More than half a century ago, Alfred Hitchcock's uh, classic horror, Psycho, came out. And I, I'm a, a kind of a classic uh, monster movie buff or horror movie. Uh, I, I'm not so much the, the newer stuff, but I like the classic stuff. And I always liked them, you know, the, the Dracula and all that, because, it, you know, the, you always knew where good and evil stood. And good always won over evil. But in this movie, uh, Hitchcock's movie, Psycho, when it burst on the scene, you remember that famous shower scene. And uh, this particular lady, after that movie, had this uh, terrible fear of showers even though she knew it was a movie and that was fake. 
after watching the shower scenes herself, she never again could hardly take a shower. Only took baths and never closed the shower curtain and, and uh, had uh, all kinds of anxiety when she went to motels and things. Fear can be a crippling thing. And it can take over our lives if we're not careful. There's a saying that I like that came out several years ago called, where people say, it's all good. You've probably heard it. The first time I remember hearing it, I was walking down the sidewalk, not paying much attention at Asbury Seminary, and probably studying my Hebrew cards and looking down and almost ran into a young lady. And I said, oh, I'm sorry. And she said, it's all good. And I thought, well, that's interesting. I kind of like that. It's all good. And I, I heard that, you know, the term came from years ago, maybe in the 90s, from some rappers or something. I don't know, but I think I, I can trace it all the way back to the Garden of Eden when the Bible says that God looked at everything and said, it's all good. <laughs> you know, it's good. And so if we could just have that mentality and understand that if God is in control and God is on the throne, it really is all good. And if something takes my life, whether it's a pandemic or whether it's some crazy thing that happens through violence, you know what? I'm okay. Don't worry about me because I know where I'm going and I have a home in heaven. So don't let fear take control of your life. And so I want to just real quickly suggest a couple ways that you, that you can uh, help um, manage our fears. Number one, First of all, in any difficult situation, it helps to know that we're not alone. You know that. It helps to know that we're not alone. Uh, sometimes we have anxiety and uh, we allow those to, take, to get the best of us. Sometimes for me it might be just standing up in front of a bunch of preachers giving a talk or even in church, there's times it hits me worse than others where I have to say, Sandy, would you just pray for me real quick? It happens to us sometimes. But we have to remember that we're not alone. Marcus Bales in his book, Speak Confident, has a collection of stories, and one of those talking about overcoming social anxiety. He tells about a video that went viral and it made its rounds too, not too long ago on YouTube. But it's a young man who has autism who gets up to sing. And he's singing Let It Go from the movie Frozen. And as he gets up to sing that song, the nerves begin to get the best of him. And he begins to forget the words. But people in the crowd softly started singing along with him. And it got louder. And as he realized he had the uh, crowds with him, support of the crowd with him, he began to remember and began to sing with gusto. To finally, he, he finished that song and everyone stood and gave him an applause and he was a very proud boy. I think sometimes in life, we need that. I need to be able to know that if I fall on my face this morning, both physically or literally or spiritually, that somebody out there is saying, it's okay. It's okay. I, I, I got your back. I'm praying for you. And we need to be able to know that when we mess up, even if it's singing or, or whatever it is, that there's people out there saying, I, you know, I've been there. I know what it's like to fail. I know what it's like to fall on my face. That's okay. I'm human. And I need to know there's people praying. And I want, we all want to know that, don't we? That when we mess up, that people aren't ready to kick us off the bus, but they're ready to say, you know what? Join the club. Join the club of non-perfect people. There may be a perfect church out there, but I haven't found it yet. But I'm so thankful today that we don't claim perfection. We're human. But we are to have one another's backs. And more importantly, God has our back. And that's what's more important. 
So know that we're not alone. And the second thing is this. Wrapped in God's love, we can walk confidently in any situation. Wrapped in God's love, we can walk confidently in any situation. If you know that God loves you, if you know your Heavenly Father is with you, you can walk into any situation confidently. That's not overconfidence, that's just knowing God is with me. Wes Humble, a pastor in Granville, Ohio, tells about a woman one time that was having a tough time in her life. She was struggling in her marriage. She was struggling in her home. She was depressed. She was just having a hard time. And she just didn't know what to do. And one day, a sparrow had made its way into her home. The door was wide open, and it had come in. And she sat and watched the sparrow as the sparrow realized that she was in the house and tried to get out of the house. The sparrow could have flown, could have flew right out the door, but instead there was a window above the door that was completely closed, and the sparrow ran into that window, and it kept running into that window over and over and over, as you've seen birds do. To finally, it had no more strength. It was so weak that it was, could only walk. And the bird just simply walked out the door to freedom. She said, at that moment, the Lord spoke to me and said, that's like you. You've tried so hard on your own, and in your own strength. And now it's time to walk into freedom with me. There comes a point in our lives where we just say, God, I can't do this on my own. I, I'm not big enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm not wise enough. I need you, and I need your strength, or this ain't going to get done. And we can just walk confidently into the presence of God. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow. And I know that the same God that holds the universe in His hands hold me, holds me in His hands, and that same God holds you, and He can take care of you. It's all good. little bird sings in the morning. He doesn't know where his next meal is coming from. He doesn't know what's around the bend. But he sings. Because he knows that God is watching your nose. One of the things that we're afraid of, you know, our fears, sometimes many of those things never come to pass. You may be afraid that you're going to get hit with COVID-19, and you may get hit by an F-150. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So the things that you fear, I, I'm not saying that we shouldn't fear, but we can't control a lot of things. But God is on the throne. And if you don't know the Lord today as your Savior, I want to tell you something. The greatest thing that I ever did in my life was the day that I gave my heart to Christ. And I laid down that night in my bed, and I slept, and I knew that if my heart stopped beating, I was okay. I had nothing to worry about. Grace, my fears, relieved. And if you don't know that kind of grace and that kind of uh, hope, I want to encourage you today to talk to me or to pray. You can do that, and you can pray right where you are. This simple prayer right here, whether you're at home, whether you're right here, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me, a sinner. If you pray that prayer and you mean it with your heart, God will honor that prayer. Amen.